What's up everybody, this is Beers for Build. I'm Chris and we are here today to do some exhaust on the Plan A BRZ. We have behind us a Zeta exhaust system. I bought this a very, very long time ago before we filmed anything and it was for the Plan A BRZ and now it's time to finally get this thing on here. So it's a pretty cool time for me. Uh, we're gonna do a full just unboxing and layout of the exhaust system and figure out how to bolt this thing on here. Shouldn't be too hard, hopefully it'll be a lot of fun and in the end we'll get to hear what this sweet, sweet exhaust system sounds like. Stay tuned. Well guys, something kind of interesting happened. Uh, this happens sometimes in projects, but basically what happened was I'm, I'm working with my, my mid pipe here, um, and I'm sitting here like poking it at this thing and thinking, oh man, it doesn't fit. And, uh, and then I started to realize like, uh, of course it doesn't fit. I ordered a cat back exhaust system, and I'm, I'm sitting here looking at this, with the, this is a resonator, and I'm sitting there, starting to, to see how it would attach straight up to our exhaust manifold. Well, of course, that's not um, the right way to do it. Cat back means what it sounds like. It's from the cat back. Um, so I'm like, oh, of course, I'm missing pieces. So, uh, you know, a small problem when you don't look at a diagram beforehand. I mean, I could easily went to a Subaru Parts website and just looked at the exhaust uh, diagram to see how, how many pieces there are and what there are. And uh, I found out that I'm missing two pieces. There's one piece, what they call an overpipe. It's a bendy little thing. It goes over your subframe and attaches directly to your exhaust manifold. And then you have uh, what they call a front pipe and that's got your catalytic converter in it. So, um, you know, we film at a pretty fast pace here and I don't have time to, for instance, order parts. I want to get this car on the road as fast as possible. So I started doing my, my normal kind of what can I do routine. Checked all the local junkyards, no go, couldn't do that. Super parts dealership. It was going to be about eight or nine hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks for the parts. Um, of course, they're on eBay in many, many different forms, um, and I don't have to run emissions, so I could have done a straight through pipe, uh, cat delete pipe, any of those options. Uh, they would have been about two hundred and something, two hundred thirty, two hundred forty bucks for the over pipe and the front pipe combined. Uh, luckily, I was able to find one on Craigslist. Uh, a young, cool dude um, had a BRZ or an FRS. I can't really remember, and he wrecked it. And he had this on it, and he took it off before he gave the car to the insurance company. So this is a nameless performance. You know what's really funny? Is the kid said he took his exhaust off because the insurance company wouldn't pay for it in the wreck. And the kid's right down the street. He could have wrecked this car, and maybe I have it now. And that's why it didn't come with exhaust. It's possible. Anyways, um, I'll text him and ask him what color his car was. but. Uh, Let's gloss over that. So this is a nameless performance. Um, this is called an overpipe front pipe combo. So you got your catalytic converter here. This is the overpipe. It bolts straight up to this thing right here. And uh, yep, it's a perfect match. And then it goes down. Now here's the big problem with this. Well, I'm not gonna say big problem until we actually prove that it's a big problem. Overpipe and front pipe are normally two pieces. So you snake the overpipe into your exhaust manifold, bolt that in there, and bolt your front pipe to that. Nameless performance, everywhere online, when you go look at these things, there ha people are having fitment problems. They're having problems with getting these things bolted up there correctly, and so they don't have exhaust leaks, and they're not banging against the subframe or the engine block. So, um, you know, you can see from here, I don't know if that's scratching or against the engine block or whatnot, but uh, there's some marks, and then, People have said, okay, well, make a little dimple in here, which we already have right here. It gives you a little bit of clearance. So I'm not expecting this to be an easy bolt in. That's a bit of a bummer. Um, but we have this piece and we have our cat back exhaust. So we have a full exhaust system now. We have the gap, all the gaskets that we need. Um, I have all new gaskets. So it's time to get to work. I'm gonna jack up the car. I'm gonna put the car on a four, I'm gonna do every corner, four jack stands, get the whole car raised up nice and high so I can get under there with the creeper and we're gonna get started. All right, well I got the car all jacked up. It's on four different jack stands and I did the, 
good old uh, safety test. So just grab onto the front crash bar and just, you know, wiggle it back and forth as hard as you can. Make sure things settle in and that uh, it's not gonna fall off any jacks or anything in the event of uh, me being under there wrenching on it. So it's all good. It actually did <laughs> pop and move a little bit to settle in, but uh, it's good now. While I was doing that, I was texting the person I bought from the exhaust from and you wouldn't believe it. This is his BRZ. Um, I, I was thinking about that. Just, things just kind of added up. Obviously the exhaust was taken off of this after the wreck and that's kind of a strange thing to do. Um, anyways, yeah, so I got some talking to do with that guy. I want to know um, how it was wrecked mainly and uh, I don't know what else I need to know. But uh, that's really cool. So I finally found the original owner of this, uh, this BRZ. So that's fun. He is an aeronautics welder or something like that so i hope that um you know we'll be able to uh to talk back and forth and maybe when it comes to uh fabricating some stuff for some of these cars that he'll actually be able to be a part of bs for build and then join in with us and uh do some cool stuff uh he does welding for airplanes from what i believe or maybe spaceships i'm not really sure but uh <laughs> it'd be really cool if he could weld us up some motor mounts or something when it gets to uh custom fabrication time or for instance some sick uh outer uh, control arms for these BRZs so we can get that wider stance for drifting. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff we could do if I knew a metal fabricator. Turns out now I do, and this was his car. How cool is that? So I'm pretty stoked on that. Uh, but anyways, it's time to get underneath this car. We have a little bit of oil leaking out, but it's not leaking from the crack that we stopped. It's leaking from somewhere else. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time of figuring that out too while I'm down here. But let's get under the car. Well, Kind of had this uh, term floating around the shop that uh, it's never easy and this just keeps going. So we've hit another roadblock. While I'm underneath the car, I was looking back and I looked at the transmission support and uh, I saw this. And this is what's left of our transmission mount. Um, it's supposed to be uh, not like that. I don't know how much the camera is going to catch of this, but it's, it's demolished. Um, it's a $50 part. It needs to be replaced. It goes above the exhaust and there's actually a bracket that comes down and hangs uh, to the exhaust from here. So I need to replace this before I can finish our exhaust, which is a bummer. It means that in this episode, I'm not going to be able to finish the exhaust. That's a Subaru part I need to order or an aftermarket part. If anybody else is doing this at home, upgrade that while you have the time. I don't have the time because I got to get these episodes out. So we got to reset our goals a little bit for the day and for the episode, which is a bit unfortunate. Here's what else I found out when I was under there. There is another oil leak. It's a very, very small, about, I would say, a half an inch crack on a piece that is only a half an inch. Um, our JB Weld is holding up really great on the other piece that we JB welded. The, it, it's not leaking at all. Not even, there's no signs of any oil leaking around that. So um, I'm going to continue using that method. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do something I learned from a commenter on the channel. He said, grab a crayon and draw along the crack. And what that'll do is that'll cram wax into the little bit of the crack so the oil will stop seeping out and then you can get a clean surface. So that was a really cool tip. So what I'm gonna do is run out of store, <laughs> buy a Crayola set of crayons, uh, so I'm top myself up on some JB Weld, and then what we're gonna do is fix that crack and then continue working on reinstalling the exhaust manifold and the nameless performance um, over pipe, front pipe. And then once we have that together, that should get us back to around where the transmission thing is, uh, transmission mount is, and that's where we'll have to stop until I can get myself a new transmission mount. So that's an overview of how we're going to continue on this episode. It's time to actually do that. All right, well, you can see under there that we got our crack uh, fixed up. The, the crayon method didn't really work because it was in like a 45 degree angle uh, crevice. The crayon couldn't really get in there very well, but um, it all went a lot better than the one before. I used a little bit of a wire brush, a little bit of a quick like lighter torch to heat some stuff up and um, it went really well. So I'm very confident in that and I feel good about doing that. Uh, the next thing I did was I put the armor back onto this uh, exhaust manifold. Now we're gonna jump back onto the car. We're gonna take the exhaust manifold loosely bolted back into place. We got some new gaskets right here from Subaru. Um, I know that I can re reuse the old ones. They're still in plenty good condition, but the Subaru parts department, it happens to be like four blocks away from the shop. 
I don't know if I've already said that or not, but uh, so I picked these up, 15 bucks, no big deal. Uh, so we're gonna loosely fit the exhaust manifold back onto the block, and then we're gonna work on trying to get our um, nameless performance uh, over pipe, front pipe uh, combo on the car. Uh, and that's where apparently things get a little bit tricky. Well, we're under the car, and I fully expect this to be very hard to see and interpret, but we're looking towards the back wheels here. And right here we have our nameless performance. There's the cat, and we have it. And right here is our subframe, or people call it a cross member. Over it, you have the nameless performance part coming up into our exhaust manifold. And we got it all plugged in here. The way we did this was by taking a jack, putting some wood in between the jack and the oil pan, jacking up the uh, motor. Now to do that, you have to undo the motor mounts, which are right here, and they go through your cross member. Now you can see, the only sketchy thing that we have going on now is we had to jack the motor up so high to get this part to slip through this area right here that our motor mounts are now not even in the, the holes, the guide holes, to where they're supposed to be. So that's the only thing that's got me worried. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this thing down really, really slowly and try and kind of coax it back into place on the way down. And hopefully my two by four won't crack in half before that happens. But this is a big win. This is a hard part to get in here and we finally got it on here and I'm very excited about that. So hopefully, and now I might even have some bolts laying around to do this. Ooh, good time to not forget to throw the gasket in here. Gonna need to throw the gasket on here. Um, Hopefully, before we wrap tonight, I can start this car up and we can listen to it with our um, stock exhaust manifold going into the nameless performance over pipe and front pipe going through the catalytic converter. So we're gonna try and drop this baby down and uh, pray that the uh, motor mounts go back where they're supposed to and we have a motor that uh, can sit safely on its own. All right, well, that was a lot of fun. I was flying around on this little creeper, just back and forth, side to side. So what I ended up doing uh, was, was actually a lot of fun and this was a really cool process. So what we did was, like I said, we jacked the motor, we ended the motor mounts, we jacked the motor up, and we actually jacked it up so high that the motor mounts were no longer connected to the subframe. So the motor is just floating on a jack and then has the transmission going down the uh, tunnel and that's keeping it kind of in line. So excuse the text. So the transmission then kinks down because the motor's coming up over here, the transmission's going down like that, and that got our motor mounts pointed the wrong, like basically at the wrong angle when we were trying to reinstall it. So we got our exhaust in there and we got everything okay and we got the room in there, so now it's time to bring the motor back down. What I did was I, I grabbed another jack that I had lying around the shop. I actually used the um, hydraulic ram jack that we used for the body work on the plan B. Anyways. I took that and I just um, lifted the transmission in the tunnel back up to where it was supposed to be and if we didn't have a busted transmission mount, that would have never actually gotten to that angle, but it did. So we lifted the transmission back up and then we started lowering the motor down quarter inch by quarter inch until it started getting a little bit closer and then what I was able to do is actually just grab the motor by the top, yank on it a little bit and then I noticed I was kind of moving the motor on the jack and I could, I could get a little bit of mobility with it. So then we got it down to where it had some pressure. The motor mounts were trying to get into the holes that they needed to go. I pulled it and wiggled it until they shot those bolts straight through, jumped back under the bottom and bolted them down. So although you know the episode is not finished, we didn't get our exhaust done in time and I did miss the deadline, um, we wouldn't have been able to do this for a couple of reasons. One, we had that busted transmission mount. The other is that um, I didn't actually have the right size gasket. I had to steal one off of another piece of our um, exhaust just to do the exhaust manifold to the uh, overpipe uh, gasket. I had to borrow one from somewhere else. So tomorrow I'm gonna go get another gasket and I'm gonna order a new transmission mount so we can get this project finished. But all in all, it was a very, very successful day. We diagnosed that we need a new transmission mount. That one's not fixable. We figured out which gasket sizing that we need exactly. Oh, and uh, bolts and hardware. I got a measurement and I know which types of bolts and hardware I need. As well as we got that really stubborn um, nameless exhaust over pipe and uh, front pipe on. And then we also fixed a secondary oil leak, which that thing was a big deal to me. I don't want my car, it's as slow as it may be, it was like, I don't know, five drips every two days or something like that. I didn't want my car dripping oil onto my headers and just like creating oily smoke and crap like that. And I'm so happy that again, GB Weld saving the day, really. We could start this up right now and listen to the new nameless uh, exhaust system on there, but I don't want to because I want to give that JB Weld some time to set in, although it's not in a pressure sensitive place. 
Anyways, uh, you can probably tell, I'm really excited. A lot of good stuff's happening. We found the owner of the BRZ, and he happens to be a really talented um, fab welder and fabricator. So we're gonna end up doing work with the guy, the kid that used to own this BRZ, which is just like the weirdest thing. I called him up randomly on Craigslist, met him this morning, we had a little chat, and then I took off, and as I was filming that and talking with you guys, I was like, wait a minute, this might have been his car. Turned out it was his car. So that's cool, another relationship in the whole tuning world and hopefully he'll have a big part of Beavis for Build when it comes to custom fabricating our parts down the line and uh, working on some of our new cars. So I'm really stoked um, and it's uh, time to uh, get on the phone with Subaru and get some extra parts and uh, I'll be back tomorrow. What's up guys, we are back uh, for the second day of this exhaust project and we have, so what did I do? Off camera, I rebolted up a new Transmission mount. Uh, I didn't film it because it's not that interesting. It's eight bolts. Anybody can do it. If your exhaust is off, it's super easy. Use a jack to hold your transmission in place and then undo the eight bolts and redo them. Um, that's no problem. So the next step that we have is finally we're getting to our Zeta exhaust. The nameless performance exhaust over pipe and front pipe are on. So this connects up to that and then that'll run back by the car. It'll go that end first. Then that'll connect over here into this which then has a bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and mount these two pieces first. And uh, once I get them mounted up, I'll bring them down there for you guys to see. This is what the floor looks at from under a BRZ. Real smart, Chris, real smart. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try and drive you guys under the car without, oh, watch your head. Oh, Jesus. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. All right. I have no idea if this is going to film anything, but here you have the nameless performance connected to the exhaust manifold, overpipe, cap. Let me get out of the way of the picture, and then you can see the rest of our exhaust. And we drive. So that's where the nameless ends. Then we go into our resonator. That's our Zeta. Resonator down to a Y pipe for our dual exhaust that we bolted up. Shiny. And that has a hook right there. And that's where it hooks up. So that's how that all holds on there. Sorry if you guys are getting motion sickness by watching this. And then our Y pipes go up. So now we gotta put our exhaust canisters on our muffling canister on and it has four attachment points right there 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 and there then we'll be able to light this candle and see how it sounds hang tight guys we got our Zeta exhaust system fully bolted on we uh, got the back on without um, really any problem at all bolted it up uh, and bolted it all up and bolted our carbon fiber tips on the end um, let's see kind of review notes the flange that goes from the nameless performance uh, front pipe into the Zeta exhaust needs much smaller bolts than what the Zeta exhaust needs so if you're like me and didn't have all your bolts for your parts get go down run out of the store make sure you have the right size bolts for your nameless um, exhaust parts Let's see, and obviously um, exhaust hangers can be a pain in the ass. Those are those little rubber bushing that hooks your uh, hanger to the hanger. And uh, those little rubber bushings can be really hard. Just remember to wiggle them back and forth. When you're trying to go on there, almost do like a screwing motion. It'll help um, the, the hangers slide through there more easily. Um, other than that, this thing went together really great. So I got a few more bolts to tighten up um, on the exhaust manifold, and then we're ready to kick it on and listen to it run. Well, dude, I, uh, I think we have an exhaust leak. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that worked out too well. So the problem is, is that the exhaust it's leaking is leaking out of the car. <laughs> we have a, not uh, out the back. Not out the, the back. back. No, it's, it's leaking out the front. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's not good. We should, we should probably get out of here. Yeah, it's 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 for effort. <laughs> On to the next project. Well, uh, while the smoke is clearing, I'd like to take a second to tell you about our new merchandise. We have some BS for Build shirts that are in the shop at the moment of this video. We have them in gray, and they won't come with this slightly uh, oil stained stuff, and we have them in black. And we have lanyards, and they are nice, and they are sleek, and they are cool. Um, on the real though, this actually isn't smoke, that was just for fun. Uh, I bought a fog machine and I was trying to play around and make a cool effect when the exhaust came out of the tailpipes and instead we just smoked up the room and we had an exhaust leak so most of the exhaust came out of the front of the car. Yeah, the leak part's for real. Yeah, we do have an exhaust yeah. leak. Uh, that's why the car sounds like a tractor. So uh, we, uh, on the real though, we're gonna just uh, let this fake smoke clear for a second and then get back under the car and try and see what's up with that. All right, guys. Well, we found um, the soy soy <laughs> a little. Cut. I don't know. Yeah. Cut, but slash keep it in the video. We found the source of the exhaust leak. Um, I mistakenly forgot to tighten down the whole left bank of the exhaust manifold. So the three bolts on there and the gasket and everything they were just like hanging off, like completely detached, like a quarter inch. That's why it sounded so bad. I was like, that's a serious exhaust leak, and it, in fact, it was. So let's go try and turn the car. Oh yeah, that sounds a lot better. Let's head back and listen to it. So this is the warm-up sound. So the engine's revving a little higher than normal to do the warm-up. And you guys will hear it kind of calm down and then maybe I'll flip it a couple times. Yeah, just hang on here and let it warm up and then I'll flip it. So the, it's now down to like 1,000 RPMs, it's just kind of idling. It's still a little bit of a high idle, it's got another level down. But I'm just going to blip it a couple times. Okay, well that was a little bit strange. Huh, my car got set off. Anyways, uh, so I, I blipped it a couple times and then it got really pissed off, so I don't know what that was. Um, let me stop the panic mode on that car. Um, I don't know what that was, but uh, I'll plug in the um, OBD2 port scanner and figure that out. All right guys, so uh, towards the end of the exhaust, uh, the rev up and stuff, uh, everything kind of went to shit. Um, you guys probably heard the engine started uh, jumping it, it almost sounded like it was running really rich, but I, I really can't tell what was going on. So we turned it off, I ran the codes, it has a bunch of codes about air, which are interesting. So then I unplugged the air sensor hoping that, uh, the mass airflow sensor hoping that it would go into limp mode, and it didn't. So here are some of the codes that we have. We got mass air, mass or volume airflow A circuit low, intake air temperature sensor one circuit high, manufacturer control. Uh, HO2 heater resistance bank one sensor three, 
HO2 heater control circuit, low bank one, sensor one, throttle A position, sensor A, minimum stop performance. So those are some of the codes that we got. Let me turn it on and show you guys what it sounds like. Doesn't sound great. And now this is with the airflow uh, detached, so I'm expecting it to be in limp mode and just give us a base map and run decently, uh, but that's not really the case. And that's just what it keeps doing. So we got to wrap it up for the day. Um, we did a great job installing exhaust, but unfortunately, um, engine slash computers are really pissed at us right now. So, uh, you know, that's kind of the spirit of the channel. We're not uh, afraid to ask for help or admit where we've messed up, which I don't mean, I don't know if we've messed up. I think what's happened is, you know, the car is still broken. We haven't got down to the bottom of it. Um, but, you know, that's what we're doing. We're here to learn. If anybody has any ideas of how we could troubleshoot this, um, let us know. But uh, I think, I think uh, for now we have to kind of end this episode and, and uh, pack it up. So thank you guys all very much for watching. Um, please like uh, the video if you like this video. Uh, it's the most scared I've been on this project for a long time because I have no idea what the hell's going on. Um, but, oh well, we'll get through it. So like the video if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you guys want to help us out with our build or our projects, you can buy any of our merch. We got, like I said, new t-shirts on the store. We got lanyards, we still have key tags, and we got hats. If you all want them, that's a whole breakdown of the store and buying anything on the store really supports the channel. So thank you guys that have done that. And if you guys would like to support us, buy some stuff, all that money goes back into the cars and fixing these things up. And I promise not fog machines. Um, let's see. You can find us at bsforbuild.com. That's where you can find our store We're on facebook.com slash bsforbuild on Facebook. And we are bsforbuild on Instagram. That's where you can find us. And uh, hopefully in the next episode, we'll be diagnosing this and getting it all fixed up. Thank you guys very much for watching. Like the video, subscribe. Peace.